Hey everybody, Jane here. And I know I promised that this wasn't going to become a what's life like with bariatric surgery channel. It is still a book channel. But I did want to do a quick video as I get close to my surgery about some of the things that I found surprising so far in the process for those who might also be going through it. So I am scheduled for surgery July the 17th. So it is really close. I'm less than two weeks out from surgery at this time. And it has been quite a process. Uh, a lot more of a process than I was kind of expecting, to be honest. And I wanted to talk to you about five things that were not what I expected as I prepared for surgery. And I will probably keep you updated as I continue to get ready for surgery of what I'm experiencing as somebody about to have bariatric surgery, assuming all goes well, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so a little bit about my journey um, so far for people who are new here, this is your first time tuning in, you don't know me, that's fine. Um, I'm an author. Most of the time I do content about books, but a couple years ago, um, I have PCOS and I was having really bad PCOS symptoms. And a couple years ago, I had an IUD placed and that IUD placement, for whatever reason, knocked my weight up to over 300 pounds. And 300 pounds was kind of the number on the scale that I had put in my head that, you know, if I go over this weight, it is time for weight loss surgery. I've had weight loss surgery offered to me before, but it was something that I didn't think I was going to do. I was concerned about doing. I'd heard a lot of positives, but negatives, and I was nervous about. But I thought, you know, 300 is that weight that I just don't think I can healthily live at that weight. So uh, now I want to give you some background. My family is all big. My parents are both heavier. Um, my dad is, I think right now he's a little under 300 pounds, but he's been over 300 pounds a lot of his adult life. Um, my brother is like right under the 300 mark. My sister, I'm not sure exactly where she is, but I think she's the high 200s. My mother is the lower 200s, but everybody in my family is, is overweight. I have tried throughout my life multiple things. I've done Weight Watchers three different times. I've tried keto. I've tried slim fast. I've tried like a, a paleo. I've tried a gluten-free, dairy-free, no processed foods. And I've just never had much success. Sometimes I could lose about 20 pounds, but then I'd start gaining it back even when I was still working the program. And so it has been a very frustrating road for me. And over the years, I have slowly, you know, just put on weight and weight and weight. Um, when I graduated high school, which I would have been 18 at the time, I was 235. And now at 40 years old, I'm a little over 300. So it has been a journey. And that is why I decided it was time to have surgery. You know, I'm seeing the health problems that my parents are having due to their weight. And I'm realizing that that is the road that I'm walking down if I don't do something drastic. That's kind of how I got to the, I want to have surgery. Um, so when I first started, I was with one doctor who my insurance took, but their practice closed. I don't know all the details of why it closed, but it closed very suddenly. And so my employer had to get an exemption for me and several other patients to go to a different surgeon um, and it, it has just been a journey. So we've been trying to prep for surgery for probably a, a little over a year now. It's, it's been, it has been, it has been rough and I'm on my second surgeon um, but I'm, I'm very excited and like I said right now we're on that finish line. We're two weeks out from surgery. So here are five things though that I wasn't expecting when I started this journey. I don't necessarily know how much impact they'll have if you're thinking about surgery, but just good to know. 
So the first thing is the amount of testing that took place and, and, and hoops you have to jump through to get surgery. And on top of that, how expensive that is. So when I was kind of battling with my insurance company to switch doctors, I had wondered, well, what about if I do this surgery without insurance? And I was quoted by my new surgeon's office that to do it without insurance would be about $20,000, which is a good bit. So one of the things I've learned along the way, though, is that even with insurance, this is still a fairly expensive thing. And I wish it wasn't because from everything I hear, this can be life-changing and life-saving. And it does obviously depend on your insurance. But not only do you have to factor in when you're considering the cost if you're either going to pay out of pocket or if you're co-paying it, but you know are just thinking at the cost of surgery, there's so much that goes into the surgery that you have to get before you can get the surgery, at least that I did. And every doctor is a little different and insurances are different. But before my surgery, I had to have a psychological evaluation. I had to have a cardiac clearance. I had to have a pulmonary clearance because I have asthma. I also had to have an endoscopy. I've had to have several rounds of blood work. And all of these things were not cheap. I also had to go and have um, a chest x-ray and testing through my doctor. And it's, it's really added up way more than I expected it to in addition to the surgeon cost and the cost for the, the, the hospital stay, because I do have to stay overnight at the hospital. And obviously like those costs were still, since I haven't had the surgery yet, they've given us the estimate and had us prepay for that. But I wasn't fully like aware as I was trying to save up for the surgery of all the other tests and things that would have to happen. I figured I could go in and be like, I'd like surgery and they'd be like, sure, let's do this. But they have you go through a lot of testing first. And again, I think every office is a little bit different, but just be aware if you're trying to save up for surgery that not only do you need to factor in the cost of your doctor and uh, or surgeon and the hospital stay if you need to have a stay depending on your surgery, but also you need to factor in the potential testing and find out ahead of time what kind of testing are they going to put you through so that you can budget it. Because while we've been fortunate and able to afford it so far, <laughs> um, it, this is something that I definitely hadn't planned on the amount of cost for things that were not the surgery <laughs> itself. Um, so that's number one. Number two, I have been so surprised as I get support through in, in the bariatric community. I've, I've joined several Facebook groups. And one thing that I've been so surprised about is that every doctor seems to be different in their approach. And, and even as we're preparing for surgery, we went and spoke to um, the nurse navigator beforehand. We had a, like a little class with everybody preparing for surgery. There were three people in my class and the nurse navigator's like, yeah, our doctors, depending on which doctor you have, you may have this list of meds or this list of meds or this list of meds. And, you know, depending on which doctor, they may want this or that or this. And I was really surprised because these are doctors within the same practice. Well, then I'm on these support groups and finding that a lot of people are having different experiences or different expectations from their doctor than I'm currently having, which I'll be honest, kind of freaks me out a little bit. So I'm two weeks prior to surgery and I am on a lean green diet. So my doctor, basically what they told me um, is prior to surgery up until like two days before. Um, we just want you to eat lean green or lean meats, greens, fruits, but an, a relatively normal but healthy diet. But like I know some of the patients that I talked to have been on like liquids or mostly liquids for that two weeks. And I'll be honest, it has me a little bit panicky because my doctor's like, yeah, the reason we put you on this diet is to shrink your liver. And based on some of my labs, my liver's not great where it's supposed to be anyway. So I'm like, should I be doing these other diets? 
but I mean, this, that's not what you told me. So I, I am sticking to what my doctor told me, but it's, it's a little freaky to be like, just because I'm having this experience, you may not. And you go online and you talk to people about like, you watch videos about people after surgery and everybody's different. Everybody's doctor's different. Everybody's regimen's different. And it's, it's, I just expected it to be more regulated of everybody does this. And the fact that it's not is kind of freaky. Um, now I am also having gastric bypass as opposed to the sleeve. So I don't know if that is part of the reason that I'm having such different experiences. But just be aware as you go on your journey that if you've had a friend who's gone through it and they've got a different surgeon, their experience may be very different than yours. And hopefully that's okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how much that affects the different aspects of the surgery. I just have to trust my surgeon. I've been told my surgeon's very good. So fingers crossed that, that everything I'm being told is correct. All right. So the third thing that has kind of surprised me is all the opinions everybody has when they find out you're about to have surgery and how vast those opinions can be. I did already know and expect some people to be like, oh, I had a friend who had surgery and this was their outcome. You know, I've, I've heard that before. But I've been surprised at other things. Um, I've been surprised at so many people being like, well, do you really need surgery? Can't you just have diet and exercise? I'm like, well, I've tried diet and exercise the last basically 20 years of my life with no success. So no, diet and exercise isn't going to work for me. It might work for you, it might work for other people. My surgeon said that 70% of people who get weight loss surgery successfully lose half of their excess body weight and keep it off for five years. He says with diet and exercise, that number is 1%, 1%. So I am in the vast majority of people who are not going to have success by the more traditional weight loss means. That doesn't mean nobody does, 1% is still one in a hundred people and you might be that person and if you are that's so great assume that the people that i talk to are probably those people but i'm not and so i've been really frustrated sometimes trying to explain to people that no i really do need this surgery um this particular person was a co-worker and you know we were talking about needing needing some time off and it was one of those things that I wasn't upset about it, but I was just kind of like, no, I, I wouldn't just go have an invasive surgery if I didn't think I needed it. Um, also, you have some comments from people who are like, oh, you're going to look so good as if you don't look great now. And that's kind of been a little bit of an X factor. Like I've had some guy friends who will kind of be like, oh, you're going to look so hot. And I'm like, you know, hotness is not why I'm having this surgery. I'm having this surgery for my health. And there's a little bit of an ick factor in that too. Like, I just, if you tell a man that you're having weight loss surgery, that seem, has overwhelmingly been the, the answer that I get is, oh, you're going to look so hot if you lose weight. Like, hmm. anyway, whereas women tend to either be of, you know, the stories of the weight loss people or they did this for weight loss and it worked great and why don't you just do that, etc. So I've been really surprised at that part of people's responses and not sure how to deal with it because it, even within sometimes the weight loss and bariatric community, it can be a lot about, oh, you're going to look so good. Whereas for me, I'm really doing this for my health and I'm not necessarily excited about how I'm going to look. Like, I like how I look. I've always looked this way. And I'm actually almost more concerned about how I will look if I do lose weight because it's going to be so different. And I'm, I'm kind of afraid of having almost a body dysmorphia of, oh, I've never been thin and this isn't what I look like and I don't like it. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Maybe I'll love it. I hope I love it. But people telling me how good I look after will look after surgery really rubs me the wrong way and makes me kind of upset. And so, you know, just be aware that people will make a lot of assumptions about why you're having surgery and give you their two cents, even if it's not wanted. 
Um, you will also hear all of the stories about everybody who's ever had anything go wrong with their surgery. And, and here's the thing. That can absolutely happen. Any surgery has dangers and literally you could die from any surgery, from having your gallbladder out, your appendix out, a C-section. All of these are dangerous things. Most people have positive outcomes, but not everybody. And so you'll hear all the stories of everybody who's ever had anything go wrong. And just like outside people and their opinions and feelings about your body and your surgery can get old really fast. So I would maybe be smart if you can and only tell people who it's relevant to until afterwards when you can't go back anyway because you don't want them to influence you either either way you don't want the influence you don't want the pressure it's this other thing like with the guys and like, you're gonna be so hot that kind of feels like pressure and also like why do i want to be hot for you i ain't trying to get with you it, it, it's been it's been a complex emotional time number number four make sure you ask ahead of time for details about how to fill out your fmla paperwork and when you should do that in the process. For me, the hardest part of this process has surprisingly been like getting things together for the, the testing that I needed ahead of surgery and then the FMLA stuff. So I sent a message to my HR team and was like, what do I need to do? And they're like, fill out this paper, drop it off at the office, we'll go from there, which is great, that's what happened. And then they tell me, you have to get all this paperwork to your doctor. My doctor lives about, an, or uh, works an hour away. You have to get all this paperwork to your doctor and back to us in 15 days. My doctor's office is an hour away. They will not fax the paperwork to your employer. You have to take it and you have to bring it back. I'm also a night shifter and during the day I door dash. So I have to find like a two hours to run it up to my doctor and then a week later, come and get it in a 15 hour or a 15 day stretch. So I was not prepared for that. Also, when I got the paperwork back from my HR department, they were like, okay, so you have to fill out, uh, go online and fill out the stuff electronically for your um, FMLA short term disability payment if you want to take that. And I just personally needed a lot more hand-holding and I found the whole thing confusing. And also like for short-term disability, I'm blessed because I have it, but I'm trying not to take it. I'm trying to take just my PTO and have like a shorter interval after surgery off because I am the only breadwinner in the house. I'm already going to lose money because I'm not going to be able to do my door dashing and some of my other side gigs. But also like if I just take short-term disability, it's a small percentage of my actual pay that I get, and that's really not enough to sustainably pay all of my bills. So just figure out beforehand what your short-term disability is, if you have it, how your FMLA is going to work, and what paperwork you need, and what time frames, so that you can handle all that as appropriately as possible. And, you know, don't expect very much hand-holding. I thought it was going to be simple, but man, that as we lead up to surgery has been the most dizzying, difficult part for me. And the last thing that I was surprised about as I prepare for surgery is how my feelings have kind of ebbed and flowed and changed. When I first decided I was gonna do this, I really was upset about it. I didn't want to do it. It felt, it felt almost like getting a diagnosis for a really bad thing. It, 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 it almost felt like a really bad health diagnosis where they're like, okay, you have this disease and obesity is a disease. So, I mean, but fair, but I always, always knew I had it. I've always had, you know, obesity, but you know, we have this cure or well, this treatment, we don't have a cure. We have a treatment that will help you live the best life you can probably with this disease that you have, but it has a potential for all these scary side effects, you know, and of course I'd heard the stories. I'd met one woman who was telling me she had the bariatric surgery and she died on the table and was revived, had to go to like a nursing home for several months, never did lose weight even after her surgery. So she had the surgery for nothing. And now on the other side of it has a lot of deficiencies that she has to like 
regularly see a doctor to get shots and stuff because of these deficiencies. And, you know, the fact that I could have the surgery and it could go very wrong is scary. So I think especially early in my journey, it was a lot of fear. Um, along the way of my journey, there have been ups and downs. Sometimes I am like, man, my asthma is so bad. And my pulmonologist really believes that losing weight will help me breathe better. And man, especially if I'm having a real bad asthma day, I'm like, I can't wait to have the surgery so that I can breathe. Or I'll find myself like wanting to do something and not being able to. We were looking at like zip lining and I'm like, zip lining looks so fun, but not only do I not meet the weight requirements, but I probably couldn't physically do it at this weight. So it's like, that's one of the things I'm like, after my surgery, I can do that. Or, you know, a lot of times I can't fit on rides when we go to the amusement parks. I can do that in the future, maybe. But also it's like, man, the foods that I'm going to be eating forever and the fact that my taste is going to change and the fact that even as we lead up to surgery, you know, I've got my fridge and cupboards stocked with certain things, but I'm like, I don't know after surgery what I will want, what will taste good. What proteins have I been eating up to surgery? Because they have you on a special diet, high in proteins. And they're like, but after surgery, you may not like any of this. And I'm on the different forums and some people are like, yeah, I don't like any food now. And it's just, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of nervousness about how I'll look. But then also in these groups, I see people and their before and afters. And some of them do look so good afterwards. And I... I would love to feel very beautiful and confident in my skin, even though I think I feel that way now. Like, I've not really felt bad about my body, except for, like, men. <laughs> like, men and how they perceive me. But on the other hand, I'm like, do I want attention from men anyway? You know, is being attractive, like, yes, men have made me feel bad about my body and my weight for their pleasure, desires, etc. I'm like, but do I, do I really want to look good for these men? And, and how does that affect how men will treat me in the future? And is that good? Is that bad? It, I've been really surprised with my own feelings throughout the process and how complicated and all over the map they are. So if you've had surgery or are leading up to it, please put in the comments what you found most, uh, the things you weren't expecting, most unexpected as you prepared for surgery or even after surgery. If you are a bariatric patient who can give me any advice, please leave that down in the comments. You know, like, I don't, want to tell anybody to subscribe because 90% of the content I do is bookish and only occasionally will you get bariatric content as I go through this journey. So maybe subscribing isn't the best thing because you're going to get 90% I read some books. But, you know, maybe check back every now and then and see if I have any updates if you're interested in just the bariatric stuff that I'm going through. Uh, like I said, leave comments below about your journey if you've had a journey and I hope to see you next time as I keep you updated on this complex, difficult journey that I hope has amazing health results. This has been Jane. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.